KT7 up here. Today, I am showcasing 140 Crimson Wizard from Trials of Mana. He is a glove unit in the fire element. His sub jobs are devout and operative. Crimson Wizard is a very powerful mage that has a lot of wide guard and access to three sure hit abilities. His kit is very straightforward and user friendly. Let's go over what he can do, followed by a few sample teams and sample matches with him. His stats are similar to Angela's, beside having a good amount of HP, nothing really impressive. Agility, Dex, and Luck are just average. He has a few sure hit abilities, so accuracy is not a concern. And he has access to one additional movement, but it is not something that will benefit him in most situations. Moving on to his new equipments. He does not have a unique weapon, instead he gets a new accessory, the Wizard Rings. The general ability is magic up 25%. For Crimson Wizard only, he also gets magic penetration 20, healing power 15, and 10 human resistance when HP is above 70%. This is his best piece of equipment, and I recommend the barrier type for him. Next is TMR. It is an accessory, the ability is a self buff, grants the user hate down 5, and magic man eater 25 for 4 turns. The stats are HP 246, 1 agility, 5 defense and 8 spirit. 1 agility can help adjust your initial movement, not bad. The pellet drum from Trials of Reckoning gives him all elemental resistance 5, and lower physical damage taken 10%. If you want to build him more defensively, this is the item for him. Go with the shield type to complement the wizard rings. The pellet drum also has curse and immobilize resistance 20, plus AoE resistance 10, it can free up some trust stone slots. His attack type resistances are 15 to slash, 5 to pierce and 20 to magic. Neutral to missile and minus 10 to strike. The 20 magic resistance is great for high faith units. Magic penetration is still at a moderate level, this will help him survive units like Shureka. The 15 slash resistance is also a good starting point to build upon. His ailment resistances are 10 to silence, 50 to immobilize and 50 to disable. He has zero resistance to curse, be sure to give him a TS passive if you are not giving him the pellet drum. Next is Master Ability. He gets Unit Resistance 15, and Reaction Block Rate 20. At level 140, he gets Debuff Weakening 20, Magic Wide Guard 15, and Upgrade to his Flame Impact Attack, to include CT up small if he KOs an enemy, up to 2 times. Debuff Weakening is also one of his strengths. Moving on to his main support abilities. Number 1 gives him Magic 24%, Spirit Penetration 40, and AoE Resistance Penetration 40. Number 2 gives him Skill Activation Time Down 200 to all skills, and 15 Wide Guard against both Magic and Physical Attacks. Both of these are recommended, they are so good. His main job reaction is a Physical Reflex at 15% proc rate. It is not bad but I prefer a different one. Continuing to his LB. It is a sure hit, diamond-shaped AoE with range up to 6, range height 1 and area height 1. Before damage increases magic damage output by 20% for 3 turns. Then deals extra large damage. The modifier increases if he is targeting multiple enemies, up to 3 units. This is a very powerful LB. Next are his main buffing abilities. First is group buff, grants the group protect and shell, plus 25 wide guard against all attacks for 4 turns. For himself, he gets re-raise, and skill activation time down 550, and CT up small after reviving. With this ability active, he would have 40 wide guard against physical, and 55 against magic. The casting time reduction will allow him to instant cast all his attacks after coming back from re-raise. The second priority buff is self only. Gives him skill activation time down 350, magic penetration 40, and lower physical damage taken 25%. Also grants him an additional reaction ability to perform a counter-attack after taking physical damage. He can instant cast all his attacks with Orochi Esper and this ability active. He will not be able to instant cast his attacks with other espers. Next are his attacks. The first on the list is Flame Impact, the one that gets upgraded at unit level 140. It has a casting speed of 360. It is another sure hit diamond AoE that can hit up to 6 panels away, with range height and area height 1. Before damage lower target spirit by 30 for 3 turns, then deals 2 hit large damage. If his HP is less than 60% after using this ability, he would recover 40% HP. 
When his HP is above 60%, he gets magic up 80% for his next action. Lastly, increase his CT small if he KOs a target up to two times. The conditional buffs after attack are great in all situations. The spirit in peril is similar to Angela when she has the pellet drum equipped. Most enemies' spirit will be in single digit if not in the negative. This is also a great way to set up allies with lower spirit penetration. The second ability is a unit attack with range 4, range height 1, and casting speed at 320. Before damage lower target's reaction rate by 100 for 3 turns, then deals 3 hit medium damage. A great fire chaining ability. The third ability is the low AP attack. Before damage lower target's magic resistance by 60% for 3 turns, then deals small damage. This is a very good attack to set up against enemies that has high magic resistance. The last ability on the list is another sure hit AoE attack, this time in a cross shape. The casting speed is 320, hit up to range 5, with range height and area height 1. Before damage breaks target's magic barrier, deals large damage, and absorb 50% of damage dealt. This ability is great against units like Cypher and Sephiroth, it can ignore their evasion and break their barriers from distance, very handy. Moving on to his main sub. Both abilities are cross-shaped AoE with range up to 4, area height 1, and range height 1. Both have the casting speed of 320. The first one deals medium light elemental magic damage. The second one is the dark version of the same ability. These are not bad, giving him some chaining capabilities when teamed up with light or dark units. Next the devout sub. The support ability is devout intuition. Gives him defense and spirit 15 but magic attack down 8. The reaction ability is counter cure. This is my choice of reaction for him, 20% chance to recover 20% HP after taking damage. The notable ability from Devout is Law of Invigoration, an instant medium heal with range 4. Devout is not bad, giving him healing support should you decide to keep him in the backline a bit more. Next Operative It is a physical based job. The support abilities are Operative Intuition and Operative Dual Wielding. Intuition gives him plus 1 move and hate down 3. Dual wielding gives him evasion 12, and acquired AP up 40. These are very situational, and I don't recommend them. Maybe for PvE content or manual play. The reaction ability is predictive counter, a preemptive counter but it is physical based. The two notable abilities are Shadow Dance and Subterfuge. Shadow Dance is the reason why he has this sub job. He can run out of AP if the fight lasts longer. And this ability gives him a all damage barrier which he doesn't have in his main kit. However, he is very unlikely to have a chance to use this buff on most maps. But I usually just keep this on. Subterfuge can give Sephiroth an evasion buff if you are running him as semi-evade. Crimson Wizard himself isn't very evasive. That's all for his kit, let's move on to the VC. His VC should drop on the same day as the unit. It supports Spear, Katana, Staff Devout, and Glove. The stats are HP 312, Magic 162, and Spirit 4. The party abilities are Slash Resistance 24, Magic Attack 28, and Debuff Weakening 25. The bestowed effect is Agility 8%. The Hollow Party ability for quest content is AoE Penetration 25. DC Mastery are AoE Resistance 2 and Spirit Penetration 3 for quest content. The party abilities of this VC is almost the same as Zoma's card from Dragon Quest. This one has 25 debuff weakening instead of 15% agility. I think this card is decent, 25 debuff weakening is impactful, but it is a sub card 99% of the time. The debuff weakening will go down to 10. If your team have this and Zoma's card, they will get 36 slash resistance from them. I don't think slash resistance is totally garbage, it still has its place in the game. The bestowed of 8% agility is very strong, it enables the unit to go into battle with just one agility card supporting it. However, I don't think this VC is worth the money in terms of usage, it is best to improve your score in Trials of Reckoning. Moving on to his equipments, espers, and trust stones. In the first slot, I like the Solomon's gloves the most. Gives him more damage for the first 5 turns, and 10 unit resistance. At plus 1, it gets 10 debuff weakening, that would put him at 30 just from equipment and master ability. If you are building him more defensively, give him the pellet drum. In the second slot, the wizard's rings are a must. It is just so good, 
gives him magic pen, healing power, human resistance, and 25% magic. In the TMR slot, give him agility. Or you can give him a TMR weapon and use the pellet drum and the rings at the same time, but you will be giving up on some speed. It is an option when he is paired with Luciel whom can give him haste. The Orochi is his best esper. Magic penetration 20 and skill activation down 250 are just perfect for him. Regular Bahamu and Dark Ramu can give him more damage. The Valifor and regular Siren both have activation time down 200, but he won't be able to instant cast with them. I will go over that in the next slide. His trust stones are really straightforward. Vital or Barrier on the left. Agility on the right. With the equipments showing at the bottom, he has a couple of empty slots on the right. Go with crit rate and crit damage, or acquired AP up. Next is the casting time slide. The portion at the top is before proccing his re-raise. With Orochi and his self buff active, he can instant cast all his attacks. If he has Valifor or regular Siren, he is 50 short of instant casting. It is a pain I had to endure for a few weeks. At the bottom is when he comes back from re-raise. He can instant cast all his abilities for the next 4 turns, regardless of which skill time reduction esper you use. Obviously Orochi is the best choice. If you don't have it yet, I wish you luck on the 10 UART guaranteed banner that is coming in a few weeks. Next is Sample Teams. I will start off with Mono Fire 1, with Summer Resnick and Sephiroth. A Sephiroth semi-evade setup is what I like the most when using these three together. I will have another variation of this team next. Crimson Wizard is on his main sub-job, main support abilities, and counter cure as reaction. This team functions the exact same as with Sharika instead of Crimson Wizard. In this setup, Crimson Wizard starts with 15 wide guard against physical and 30 against magic. With his active buff he can get to 40 against physical and 55 against magic. His spirit penetration is at 50, but he does have a 30 spirit imperil from his diamond AoE attack, he is very likely to be dealing with single digit spirit, if not negative most of the time. His magic penetration is at 40 to start, it can reach 80 when he has his active buff online. AoE penetration is at 40 with no way to increase it. With over 2k magic, and that much penetrations, this is why he is regarded as one of the top magic DPS unit. The VC I want to point out is the Silver Memories. It is a huge power boost for him, and has 20 AoE resistance for Resnick and Crimson Wizard. Sephiroth is not supported, that is why the Ketones card is here to boost his evasion and give him more survivability. If you don't want to go this route, you can go with any on the substitute VCs on the left. The Keepers of the Crystal card might be the best offensive option, but I don't have the card. Personally I would go with the Phoenix for 10 more magic resistance or the Howlet card for some magic man eater. Next is a more traditional fire setup. Death Machine is on Resnick to give the group 20 AoE resistance. The Brachiosaur is the unit resistance VC for the group, but it only has 8% agility. The Silver Memories is in the sub slot, only offering 5% agility from bestowed. But Crimson Wizard does not lose any agility because the Encounter of Heroes has 3 from card stats. This team is a bit slower, but Sephiroth does not need to rely on evasion as much. Next is the Glove and Book team with Young Sadali and Summer Resnick. My Sadali video should be up a day or two after this video is available. Sadali and Crimson Wizard are best buddies. Crimson Wizard brings overpowering damage, and Sadali can give him damage absorption and sequential heal to keep the two of them healthy on the front line. Couple VCs here are not available on GL yet. Sadali's main card has 24 unit resistance, 20 crit rate, and 25 magic man eater. That has so much power for the two glove users here. The main card on Resnick is Exia's card. Gives the group 18% agility, 28 magic penetration, and max HP 25%, these are top-notch for this group. 28 magic penetration will put Crimson Wizard at 84 magic pin and over 100 with his active buff. Roy's VC has 16 magic penetration and 15 crit rate, it can increase Sadali's overall damage output. The only reason for his card to be here is to boost Sadali's magic pin and crit rate. If you don't have this VC, you can use Howlet's card for the magic man-eater. If you are missing some of the cards here, you can use the sub VCs on the left to fill in the slots. Sadali's card will come next week, and Exia's will arrive in 3 weeks if Halloween doesn't take priority. Either way, this is quite an expensive team to put together. 
The last team I am featuring is the Devout and Glove team with Exia and Sadali. GL is about a month away from completing this setup. I will save it for my Exia video, and won't go into too much detail here. This is a very fun team to run, there are so much healing and power. Okay, let's move on to the VC for the Glove group, then my final thoughts. With the arrival of Sadali and Exia's VC, this group is ready. There are some notable crossovers with many groups but realistically, the only crossover that works well is with Devout. I don't even have Spear listed here, it is quite difficult to make them work together, even if I include Sephiroth. Now my final thoughts on Crimson Wizard. He is a true powerhouse with access to 3 sure hit attacks. There is no questions about his damage. He also has a lot of bulk, with wide guard and damage absorption, he can last quite a long time even against units like Shureka. However, his problem is timing of his release. We are at the tail end of fire because of Exia. If you want to run him without Sephiroth, you likely will need Sadali and his VC plus Exia's VC. I am not going to recommend a unit, knowing that it needs everything in the upcoming 3 to 4 weeks. That is just too much for anyone. My recommendation is to save for Exia, she is overall a better unit. Or consider Garusa, after checking out his kit. If you are a gambling addict like me, go for Crimson Wizard, and the next three releases following him. They are pretty amazing together. As for his VC, it is an easy skip. 25 debuff weakening in the main slot is great, but it is most likely a sub card, which only offers 10 debuff weakening. It is not nothing, but just is not worth the 20 plus K this. We can all live without it. Now let's go to some sample matches. The first match of the day is Mono Fire against the most meta team with Sephiroth, Resnick, and Shureka. Crimson Wizard's first action is Group Buff. Gives the group Protect, Shell, and all Wide Guard 25 for 4 turns. For himself re-raise, and after reviving, lower his attack skill activation time by 550 for 4 turns, and CT up small. Second action, self buff. Lower his skill activation time by 350, magic penetration up 40, and lower physical damage taken by 25%, all for 4 turns. Also grants him an additional reaction to counter physical attacks, the range is 5 with range height of 1. He is now going in for his sure hit LB. Before damage, increase his magic damage output by 20% for 3 turns. Then deals extra large damage. Increase modifier when targeting multiple units, up to 3 targets. Did over 8k to Sephiroth, and cap damage on Sharika. This is Flame Impact, a diamond-shaped sure hit AoE attack. Before damage lower target spirit by 30 for 3 turns, then deals 2 hit large damage. Recover 40% of HP if his health is below 60%. And increase his magic by 80% if his HP is above 60%. Also increase CT small if he KOs a target up to 2 times. He is using Flame Impact again, but his cast time reduction buff has run out. Took out Sephiroth again.
He just kept spamming flame impact and Resnick keep healing them. I am going to speed this up. This is his triple hit unit attack. Before damage lower targets reaction by 100 for 3 turns, then deals 3 hit medium damage. Triple hit again. Second match of the day is against Cypher, Luciel, and Angela. FFT rerun is coming to JP really soon. I will do a summary video and maybe a showcase if I have time. This is his job 25 attack, also a sure hit. Before damage break targets magic damage barrier, then deals large damage, and absorb 50% of damage. This is such a great ability to deal with Cypher and Sephiroth. This is the same attack, breaking Luciel's barrier, taking her out for the first time. This is his low AP unit attack. Before damage lower targets magic resistance by 60%, then deals small damage. The last match of the day is against Sephiroth, Luciel, and Ramada. I will save the glove teams for my Sadali showcase. In this match you can see how this team performs if they are slower than their opponent. And Crimson Wizard cannot get his skill activation down buff. That's all I have for today. Thank you for watching. Have a good one. Noriko Oh, 
Let's go. 